I'm looking up. I'm looking up what you've uh, done. So you, you were the first saying? writer for the Punisher. Yeah. Do you guys hear me? Well, yeah, yeah, I can, I can hear, hear you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. No, what the hell? That's what it says on Wikipedia. It says it says Mike Barron. He Mike is also wrote well the, known. Mike had the ongoing run. Oh, okay. Oh, I got it. I I had the sound turned off. <laughs> I thought we'd entered the the twilight zone. <laughs> That's all right, because I live in the Twilight Zone. I think a lot so of people wrote, are living you in the Twilight like Zone. Batman, the Flash, the Lantern. I'm just going through uh, Michael's uh, books now. And that Punisher run is great. And the Nexus, too. Don't forget about Nexus. We have a new Nexus came out recently. It was illustrated by Kelsey Shannon. We're very proud of it. It's a great book, Mike. Thank you, sir. I think I got a copy here somewhere if I can find it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I there love that cover. Kelsey yeah, popped out of his hole recently and then went right back in it. <laughs> Who said that? Flash, did you just say that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, that's funny. Uh we hadn't heard from him in so long that Ethan sent the police to his house to see if he was dead. I was kind of thinking something was wrong with him because uh, I hadn't heard from him in months, and he has a he was gonna do a comic book cover for me, and he finished it. He said he mailed it, and I tried to hit him up and ask him if he mailed it yet, and he's gone again. I know uh, we've been trying to reach him, and because he's working on a, another Nexus project for us, uh, he already did the first chapter. Uh, it's a first of a trilogy. Richard Meyer commissioned this, and after the first book came out, he said, Mike. Uh, you're doing better with your crowdfunders than I am, so I'm going to turn the rest of it over to you. Uh, and Kelsey was real gung ho on it. We spoke to him about two weeks ago, and he said he was working on the second issue right now. And I sure hope he is because he nailed it. I mean, his his art is beautifully suited to Nexus. If anybody could replace Steve Rude, uh, Kelsey can, and yet he's unique. I mean, he's got his own style. He redesigned the ship and everything. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's pattern off, off what uh, the dude did. It's based on his designs, but it's different yet. It's an uh, it's an evolution. Um, yeah, I new. want him. The cover that he made for me is really great, but I don't know if I'm even going to get it because I don't know what happened to him. Have you like, seen I'll, it? Yeah, I'll show it to you. It's a painted cover. He was yeah. going to send it to me. And then I'm going to scan it when I get it, if I get it. I don't know if I'm going to get it in time to put the cock out. But this was the cover. Beautiful. Yeah, I really was, like it. Wasn't he on the stream, that the, the guy that did this? Kelsey? Yeah, he's yeah, been on the yeah, stream Yeah, I remember. Before. He has, like, long hair, right? Glasses or something? Beard. He has a beard. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. I think I was on for that one, too. Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, I wanted to do it, but I, can, I guess maybe a second printing comic. I could use this, but. I don't know if I'm going to get it in time now. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's funny if he even way. sent it. <laughs> if he even yeah, sent it. I know. He should have uh, supplied a tracking number if he did. Uh, but I have other Nexus in the works. I wish I could tell you who's drawing them. But uh, it's premature now. Yet They've already started, and, and you're going to love it. It's some of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, but right now, we're focused on Sherlock Holmes. Uh because I said it has that steampunk element to it. Uh, and also the story is going to blow your mind. It, it contains some uh, surprise characters who exist at that time. And the whole thing is, is reminiscent of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, uh, which Alan Moore created. But the fun thing is that all these Victorian characters appeared roughly at the same time. Uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, Lord, uh, Alan Quatermain, uh, Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Jules Verne's characters. And so it's fun to mix and match, uh, including Tarzan and Doc Savage. There's a great science fiction writer named Philip Jose Farmer who created the Wold Newton universe in which he started crossing all these characters over with each other. In fact, uh, he wrote a detailed biography of Tarzan, uh, which is a straight ahead biography. It's, it's, it's a great book. And uh, he had Tarzan and Doc Savage interacting all the time. Only he called them Lord Tiger and Doc Caliban. Uh, Philip Jose Farmer wrote The Great River World, which was turned into a bad series on sci-fi. But 
Riverworld starred uh, Mark Twain and Sir Richard Burton, the explorer, among others. Uh, and I love that because those characters fascinate me too. Somebody in the chat wanted to ask you how you feel about the changes to Punisher. Uh, well, uh, I don't feel good about them. I think that Marvel is embarrassed about the character. They're ashamed of him. Uh, they don't like the fact that police and military have adapted the symbol. Uh, but to the police and the military, it means justice. And that's all it means I know, because I know police and military, and they told me. Um, and that's why I created Private American. It's a book on my website, baroncomics.com. It's everything the Punisher should be but isn't. When we first meet the private American, he's on the southern border, intercepting child traffickers, drug smugglers, and terrorists. Uh, when we announced that book, the Daily Coast, which is a far-left hate site, ran an article headlined, Punisher creator Mike Barron releases another racist AF comic book. Mm. It was written by a purple-haired cancel pig who's never read anything <laughs> that I've written because she was describing a book that hadn't been released yet. Uh, and the truth is the exact opposite of it. When we first meet a uh, private American, he's slitting the throat of a, of a, uh, a human trafficker who's about to rape a 12 year old girl. And when he saves that group of people crossing the border, he points them in the direction of the uh, border patrol. He says, head to the lights. They'll take care of you. Hmm. He's, uh, you know, yeah, that article, they were trying to call you like a bigot. And, so, and it's you know it's funny is because obviously America isn't with that purple-haired bitch, because I mean they overwhelmingly spoke during the election. People want these people want these illegals gone. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. they gone. Right, and that's one of the reasons that Trump won. One of oh, the yeah, major reasons. Yeah. And now they're running scared. They're they're scared shitless because he's going to come in and dismantle uh, the blob, as James Kunstler refers to the federal government. Uh, and as we know, the federal government could effectively be reduced by 80% and we'd all be better off for it. It's in our face everywhere we go. The, uh, the restrictions, the laws, and the statutes uh, are impossible to list. Uh, when you put a bill before the legislature that's 790 pages long, it's an insult to our intelligence. And another thing that occurs to me is that most of our elected representatives have never read the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Have you ever heard a reporter ask them if they've ever read the Constitution or the Bill of Rights? Never happened for obvious reasons, because neither one of them, neither the elected official nor the reporter has read the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. They're just not interested. Hmm. Yeah, you know, that's where Punisher would be right now. If uh, Marvel was doing it right, he would be at the border. That's right. So what do you what do you think of the Punisher in the Netflix series then? Is that well, not like, good either? I like, I like John Bernthal a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought his representation was, was very strong. But I thought that uh, the series itself was needlessly convoluted and removed from the Punisher's roots. He's not that difficult to get right. He's a classic American vigilante. Uh, in the tradition of Paul Kersey or Dirty Harry. Uh, and American wa America was settled by vigilantes. Wyatt Earp was a vigilante. And the reason this happened was as uh, Europeans headed west or Americans, there was no law. They were the first people on that land, except for the Native Americans. So they had to uh, bring justice with them at the point of a gun. Now, a lot of the people that were out there are not good people. And they they murdered Indians. We all know about the Sand Creek Massacre. Uh, but what goes unsaid is that every one of those Indian tribes uh, acquired its land by slaughtering a previous tribe that lived there. Uh, and it's, you know, it's not, it's not as, as uh, clear cut as they would have us uh, see. I mean, there's no question that the superior uh, European civilization overran the inferior Native American population uh, through dint of uh, the Industrial Revolution, uh, their techniques, their weapons, and their strategies, and also the sheer numbers. Was it right? No, it was not always right. A lot of atrocities occurred, but that's what happens when you settle a nation. Uh, the, the things that, that went on in, in the Far East, you wouldn't believe what Japan did to China in the 20th century. 
Well, even what they did to the South Koreans with the comfort women. I just learned about that recently from uh, all this Johnny Somali stuff oh. that I've been covering with what they well, did. Yeah, the Japanese history of their colonization of Korea is pretty bad. Yeah, it's, it's rough. I'm, re- I'm reading a book called Fly Boys, which is unbelievable about the brutality and cruelty of the Japanese. But it also uh, points out that the Japanese had uh, what they thought good reasons to do that. Uh, because when America showed up in the Far East, it shocked the hell out of them. They had no idea that, that battleships even existed. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, America overran a number of islands there in, in the, uh, the Far uh, East and uh, was not always uh, careful of, about how they operated there. And it wasn't just America. I mean, it was any European. It was uh, the Spanish when they took over the Philippines and the French when they took over Indochina. They all uh, performed atrocities because, again, they were out there without any law controlling them. They were the law. They brought the law with them. It was whatever they said. Uh, and human nature being what it is, they were there for money and and uh, looked down in contempt with the native pop. pop populations mm. which always happens yep time it's the thing about it's interesting, it's interesting you say how like with the punisher <clears throat> it's not that hard to get the punisher right but it seems that at the moment they can't seem to get like anything right it's like no. it's sort of the same thing it's not that hard to get blade right right i know i know but like how yeah, long has that can't. been in development hell for I'm yeah, just trying to crack to these characters, right? Trying to crack that them. blade nut there. Like, I wonder what should we do with blade? I don't know. But is it is it yeah, the only reason why they're they're something? they're they're like messing up blade so much? Is because essentially, from all the leaked scripts that I've seen anyway, is that they always want to basically have Blade's daughter become the next Blade by the end of the movie, and that's why it just keeps getting ruined because they can't find a way to like satisfy Mahershala Ali because. He gets sidelined in the first movie that he gets brought into, which that's what they want to do anyway. So I think the uh, problem with Marvel is that they've uh, forgotten that their mission is to entertain. Yeah. Oh, that's 100%. been the problem with uh, not just Marvel but Disney in general. I think it's, everything it's, that they're you're been, absolutely right, and Hollywood they've too. been dealing with a hundred percent all of them, and hopefully, like there's a there's a bit of a swing with this stuff now with um like wokeness and like you know in Damien you saying they want to make a female blade they made a female loki they've made this they've made that like everything oh, yeah. that they've been I mean, pushing right now in, so hard yeah right now in marvel all the main characters pretty much have all been like gender race swapped one yeah. way or another yeah if you're complete they're completely bankrupt i mean look at all the what if miles morales stories right what if miles morales is thor and he has a hammer that <laughs> has a whole spray line paint on of that it. Yeah. a whole line of that it was like so what if bad, Miles dude. Morales was this character? Like, what if Miles like, Morales what, was popular? What if Miles Morales yeah. was Spider Man? <laughs> He'll never be like this thing. Like, I've been doing that me, one for yeah. five years now. Well, there's going to be more Morales than that, like 12, Spider-Man. isn't it? That's the best one. There's going to be a huge course correction because they're losing money hand over fist and it can't continue forever. We've already seen people like Sly Stallone, Mel Gibson, and Denzel Washington oh, leave yeah. Hollywood uh, and form their own production company where they're free to make movies they want. And speaking of Denzel Washington, The Equalizer is the greatest Punisher movie ever made. Well, oh, man, I love The Equalizer. It's yeah, I haven't great. seen the third one. It's a the newest magnificent. It's, it's, it's funny. The third too one was those, better than two. It's, yeah. It's funny, too, with those guys since Tr- Trump's been I, reelected. I like all three. They've all come yeah, out all three sort of good, saying something. Just, yeah, you see Sl- uh, Stallone this week? Yeah, I saw. Hey, yeah, 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 that yeah. yeah I saw that. I saw Mike, that. Mike, did you did you like when they made the equalizer a fat black woman? Well, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, I saw that, and I had no intention of tuning in. <laughs> most most network television is is trash these days for the same reason. I mean, look at that stupid FBI show that's still on, ignoring the real drama circling the FBI is that they've gone rogue and that they're the huh. enemy of the American people. Yeah. Yes. That's. That would be an interesting show. So in your opinion, what is like any character right now in comics in general that you actually think is being done properly? 
DC, Marvel, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, well, I, I don't think there's anything being done of interest at the, at the big two. I think all the exciting books, the original books are outside that. Some are Comics Gate, some are otherwise. I like Michael Bancroft's The Lucent. I like uh, Ethan I Van Skyver's Cyber Frog. Uh, Aaron Lopresti's The Wraith of God. Uh, those guys can actually write. Now, not all ours can write, but those guys can write. Interesting. So none of so none yeah, of the I got Michael, good then. I got Michael Bancroft's book. Bancroft, I like Fe- Bancroft stuff. Fellow, fellow Aussie, the Lucent. support the Aussies. Yeah, like the only thing that DC is doing that I'm kind of interested in reading sometime is those absolute books that they're making right now. But I don't I don't know enough to be, to be honest with you. Yeah, they got so, so they're, they're selling that as Batman without the privilege. So he's like an engineer yeah. now, and then Wonder Woman is like a magic user, and she's the god Superman, of war now. Yeah, I something. haven't read. I haven't. I haven't read Absolute Superman, but I guess it's about classism and shit. Oh, see, that's not what Superman is about, or should be. I mean, they should stick to their roots. But again, uh, they've lost sight of their mission, which is to entertain. And one of the reasons is they've they've hired editors who don't know how to tell a story, who write who hire writers who don't know how to tell a story. Uh, mm. But but they all got a message they want to deliver. Uh, and so you got a lot of lectures in comic books. And believe me, people don't buy comics to be lectured. Sounds like video games, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's infested the whole fan industry. Uh, uh, video games are on the verge of collapse, too, because of DEI. Yeah, and except when you call that out, you get attacked for it. And it's like, guys, come on. Remember IGN recently had that article on their channel. They had a, I think it was Concord and Suicide Squad in the same picture. And they're like, why are all these games failing? Like, are, are big games, are, are, is, is the bubble bursting? And it's like, no, it's just stop putting woke crap in your games and you'll mm-hmm. do fine. But they Wait, just refuse to do that. So then this is what happens. It's ironic because one of the reasons comics are in the toilet, and this goes unsaid, is because we have a whole generation of kids who don't read. And the reason they don't read is they were raised on video games. And it used to be that a good video game gave you a lot more bang for your buck than the average $5 corporate comic. But now that the video games are succumbing to the same disease, which uh, you can call it DEI or whatever you want to call it, uh, but it's not entertainment and, and entertainment is not the goal. Now the video games are collapsing too. So there's a huge market out there for entertaining video games and comic books, if only somebody would, would seize the reins and, and put it out. But I, I've lost all hope in Marvel and DC. I don't think they can write the ship. They do have good books here and there, and they do have a few good writers here and there, but uh, the majority of them is just woke crap. 